get a second hand, too, it's going to be freezing. Ugh. Really? One game, I mean, well, like, like, two home games. I think we have two more home games. We don't do away games. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, one's. Oh, wow, really? I think we have. You got, like, five games left, right? All together. I think so, yeah. Two. I'm gonna say we have two. Two. I think, uh, I think Brandon's commentating the next one. Brandon, sure, is it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. He wants to commentate? Uh, yeah, he does. He wants, he wants to do this more than the cameras, and I, I, I can agree with him, dude. This is, this, looks, this is more fun. It's fun, yeah. It's fun I'd rather, I'd rather do soccer games, though. I know that more. Okay, Bill, you... I mean, don't do that many soccer games, though. No, I know, but... I got this. You got a lot of basketball. Games. Yeah. A uh, basketball wouldn't be that hard. I don't even know how to do basketball. This is the job you just figure out. Pass, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a fast paced game though, it doesn't yeah. stop. So you gotta be really on fast. This one, me and Lucky are terrible because we got freaking, we got better. Wait, well, football? We play, yeah. Uh, wait, when did this start? Last year? Last year, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't even know how much Brandon got it. Yeah. Oh, we got two zeros. We got two zeros.
Welcome, Andrew fans, and we are here for 2012 Victor J. Andrew Homecoming against the Wildcats. I'm Connor Burns. I am Mr. Kravitz. Filling in for Mike, for Mike Brennan, who will be here shortly. And as you can see from the parade. What an event today. This parade turned out wonderful. We got the kids all dressed up in the Disney characters. They got the, the crowns all over their heads. And it seems like we really emphasize and we bring the thunder because everyone even black and gold, that's all you see, black, gold, and white, Victor J. Andrew colors. They brought it out tonight. And look at this house. Look at the house coming here. We got the crowd. It's filled. Everybody's going to be the energy here. It's you, just amazing, huh, Connor? You know, Mr. Kravis, this is actually the biggest I've ever seen today. And this is really going to help in the momentum factor, because like I said, momentum is one of the key factors in a football game, don't you think, Mr. Kravis? I think momentum is, is not overrated, as many people would say, that it's not overrated. <laughs> so this is uh, looking to be an exciting game tonight. A little chilly out, huh? You know, that's really going to be an effect on how well they're going to catch the ball, because when it's cold, Catching a ball is like catching an ice cube. That's true. It's That's hard. True, and it's, Connor. it's numb. Especially since it's been on and off raining all day long. So the, the, the field is going to have some, even though we have the new turf, the field will still have water on it, and the ball will get wet. What do you think about that? And when the quarterback, even with the center, when the quarterback snaps, or when the center snaps with the quarterback, that's going to be a hard. That's going to be a hard exchange. Ah, very good. Yes, the, the center, the center being able to snap. I don't know if we're going to see too many shotgun formations tonight, based on that, huh? But again, Andrew's formation, which is really different from last year, we are in a shotgun formation at every, every huddle, every set of downs. And don't forget, Mr. Kravitz, we are finally raffling off our 2000 or 2006 Mustang Viper. It's a Dodge Viper, but yes, it is a beautiful car. Donated by a member of the Booster Club. I believe we've sold over a, a couple thousand tickets. So that, there's, a, there's a lot of money that was uh, raised for the Booster Club. And that money was going to go to our, well, everything that Booster supports, which is pretty much everything Andrew. And remember, fans, taxes are paid fully by the Andrew Booster Club. Taxes are paid. I don't know if you've had a chance to purchase a car, but that's one thing. When you purchase a car, you don't think about those taxes. Uh, taxes on a Viper, I think the state of Illinois is um, going to be, they're, they're going to be rubbing their chops a little bit, huh? I agree, Mr. Kravis. And as we get ready for the, our. And there is the flip. Anticipation from the crowd. Let's see what Coach Malik is going to do with this one. But Florence run the toss. So they will return, and Andrew's defense are going to have to step it up. Andrew has elected to receive. So it's Andrew's not going to be receiving first, and that's, that's a, a usual move by a coach. I would always want to get the ball first. Even with going back to the momentum factor, when we score, the crowd, it just it brings up the excitement, and it, it just it keeps going and going, and the defense has something to defend on. You're absolutely right, Connor. When you get off the board right away, it just kind of deflates the other team, and it will get the crowd behind us. And this is a homecoming crowd. This is going to be an exciting event here tonight. I think uh, we're about to get started with our national anthem, so let's, uh, let's hold off her.
And that was a great and that was a great national anthem, don't you think, Mr. Kravish? That was wonderful. I got, you know, the national anthem always gets my my skin to crawl a little bit. I feel the emotion every time I hear it. Well, that's our patriotic, patri our patriotic emotions go in there, Mr. Kravis. You know, you should. Being being a patriot, I should want to do that. And as we get ready, we can see Coach Malik. He's even excited. He's even excited for 2012 homecoming football. And if you if you ask me, the victor of this game is going to be. Is going to be decided through who keeps a balanced offense, whoever runs a mix between run and pass. So it gets the defender thinking, am I going to run? Is there, are they going to run or are they going to pass? What's going to happen? We get you them know, on their heels. You know, in general, that is always the best strategy. Um, if you have a team that just knows what's going to happen, I mean, you watched the Bears before. You've seen the many, many seasons of the Bears where they were just a one sided offense, whether they would have a running back. And they could run the game real well, but then the defense realizes that they couldn't pass in the game. And what, what happens? You end up having issues. Now, well, as the Bears are talking, the Bears have a balanced offense. And, and Andrew seems to have that same type of balanced offense. Right. And as we get set, Dennis Villamick, another great, another great component of the return offense. He seems to get over 20 yards each time he returned. And here's our Andrew Roster. You know, Connor, when I was a youngster, I used to be a T-Bolt football player back in the day. Oh, you went to you went to Andrew, Mr. I went Kravis. to Andrew. I went to Andrew, and I, I spent some time on that football field when it was um, not this beautiful turf that our school board put together and our boosters helped out with. This was uh, one of the best things that's happened in the past few years to Andrew High School is this new turf. That was when you would uh, run out there and you'd roll your ankle every time you do warm-ups. That being said, this, this right here would always get my, my adrenaline going. As much as you'd have a national anthem and then you'd have this Andrew pride and you have the people, the, the stands just going nuts like they are now. These guys right now feel the energy. And don't forget, just... They're playing for this crowd. This crowd all came out here just for the football team, just to see them win or get a touchdown and just win homecoming. Give, give them something for the next day or for the dance to talk about. I agree. The dance, is, the, the dance is fun, but it's always better after a win. And don't forget, folks, fireworks are coming after the game. The fireworks should be coming. We have not heard word that there is anything else. I think the weather has passed. I think it's going to be a chilly night for the rest of the night. Slightly breezy, but I think the rain might hold off for what we have. So we're just about ready to get set in the marching bands coming off the field, and the marching band did an excellent job this year, and I believe they're very winny. Yes, the marching band does. They definitely have um, some good talent out there. They're, they're committed, too. They are definitely committed. The marching band works as hard as any other activity or any other sport in the school. And they should deserve the recognition of being an outstanding marching band that they are. Absolutely. So we see number 11, our very own, Cody Hawkinson, Cody who had a terrific game last week and the week before. With numerous interceptions. Multiple interception games are tough to do in a high school level. You know, Andrew's defense, they really strategize in playing that spread coverage. And I think they're really going to help in the long run. But the only thing is they're, they're going to have to watch out for their pass run or their co run coverage because the Wildcats, they like this. They strongly advise running the ball. Andrew seems to be lining up. And here comes that Thorn Ridge team. Let's see if the kick's going to be a long one. Do you think that the, the, the temperature of the air is going to make any difference with the, the kicking style? You know, I believe so because if you think about it, you're putting, you're just putting your foot and you're kicking as hard as you can and that hurts especially with a cold football with the weather yeah it's definitely cold out here i wonder uh, if i wonder if our kicker is going to be hesitant to even kicking it if he thinks it's okay it's going to be cold which i should i kick it as i normally do or would i do i lead up a little bit do you think that's going to be a component you know it could be after that first kick because they're not going to be used to this cold this is probably the coldest game that we've had this season and there's the kick down about the 21. Number 23, Kevin Golden has it. 
and he gets a decent yardage. And don't forget, folks, Chris Golden, or number 23, Kevin Golden, turned 18 today. It's his 18th birthday on the homecoming game. That's I did not know that. That's very interesting. You only turn 18 once, and what a great day to turn 18 on a homecoming football day. And a nice football weather type of night. So as we have number seven, Jacob Platt, come out on this on the spread um, offense. There's two wide receivers out, three wide receivers. And they give it to Jarvian. No, it's a, it's a fake. Jacob Platt almost shedding one defender. That was a great run. What do you think, Mr. Kravitz? That was, that was tough. That's tough to do out there. He got to the 40. I think, um, I think we're going to see a little bit more running to get going here. And don't forget Jarvion Freeman, who is leading, he's leading our division, our division, and runs game. He's going to be one of the most, he's going to be a key component of this game. And here's the Velimic. Velimic has a lot of room outside. Will he shed one? But taken down at the 40-yard line, Dennis Velimic. So there we go. That was that shotgun formation that we were at, questioning at the beginning of the game. He did a shotgun with to a draw, which is still a run. But we got the, we were mixing it up a little bit, so they were, were making the defense think that we're, we're going to throw it. But then we run it. Didn't work quite as well as we wanted to that time, but let's see what happens. So if second, we're second and nine with 11 minutes just in the first quarter. And we give it off to Driver and Driver and finds room in the middle. He sheds one defender. He sheds two. He has a room outside. He could go to the 10. Touchdown, Jarvion, Franklin, Andrew, six, Falcons, nothing. And like I said, Mr. Kravitz, I told you he'd be a key component in this game, and he's just a powerhouse. He has muscle, he has speed, and it's going to be hard taking him down in this ballgame. It was very hard to take him down. He went through the couple defenders, and then he wasn't even touched on it. And you got to also give recognition to the offense, the offense or the offensive line. They made that lane open, and Jarvion took fully advantage of that and just sprawled right into it. You're absolutely right. The offensive line is what took care of it. Jarvion very barely got touched. Got into the end zone for six. So as we get set for Michael Ehlers, going to kick for the extra point. He's been very persistent and consistent. And like I said, it is good. Andrew seven, Thornwidge zero. You know, Ehlers' extra kick may have actually been a 35-yard field goal and had he needed to do it. He just looked like he just got up there and chip shot of it. Now, do you think his, like, he plays soccer? Do you think that has a major effect on how he kicks? You know, I did a couple little bit of kicking when I was in high school football, and there's two different kicking styles. There's a soccer kick and there's the football kick. Most high school players will go with the football kick, which is a straight-on kick, and they, they don't go off the side. They go off of more of the, the top of the foot, maybe the toe, whereas the soccer kick comes off to the side, and they kick off the side of their foot. It usually gives you, it doesn't hurt as much, and it usually goes a little bit farther when you do the soccer kick, if you do it with the right form. The football kick is definitely easier to do, but if you can master the soccer kick, you will definitely kick it a little farther. And if you notice Michael Ayler's shoes, those are soccer cleats. So I'm assuming he does the soccer kick. Here's the kick. It's a far one, could be out of, could be a touchback, and it is. Michael Ehlers is consistent with his touchbacks. Looks like Ehlers is a little pumped up for this homecoming game. Huh? And, and it brings great position for the defense. And here's the replay. The Jarvion Franklin's great run. Yeah, that's a beautiful replay right there. Number 31, Jarvion Franklin getting into the end zone. This Andrew team is, is really fired up today. I can hear the crowd. Even up here in the booth where we're trying to stay warm and we have the windows closed. <laughs> and you know, Mr. Kravitz, this is a young team, too. Mostly everyone who started are juniors. Jarvion Franklin and Jacob Plaid. So 10.56 in the first quarter. Ball on the 20-yard line. Let's see if the defense will be able to stop him. There's three wide receivers out, but two in the backfield. And there seems to be a flag on the play for multiple flags. And against the Andrew defense, or correction, Andrew or Thornridge offense. You know, Mr. Kravitz, that's really gonna that's really gonna affect him because, like I said, you now you don't have that five yards that you started with. Now you're gonna have to start over, just gaining that five yards. That's true. 
That's true, but this is definitely something they can come back. Let's see if the defense is as fired up as our offense was. So now the ball is on the 25-yard line, and it's fumbled. Will it be recovered? Looks like it got covered up. Let's see what the referee is No call say. yet. But the Falcons do recover it. But in only a gain in two, so it's going to be second and three, Fornridge. With 10.32 left in the clock in the first quarter here at the Andrew Thunderdome. So it seems like our defense are going to have to stop them four yards. What's like, like we know, four yards is really hard to accomplish in football, especially, especially when everyone's trying to come at you. It is actually because you have, usually the defense will know exactly what will be coming. Usually it's a run when it's second and four because it's, it's short yardage. And there we go, we see the run. We got the pile up there. Um, and I do not think that'll be enough. You know, when, when I was playing some defense, I usually, the fourth, the third, uh, sorry, the second and fourth, I would usually anticipate a run. First and five, I would anticipate a run. But that's when it gets over that six yards, seven yards, eight yards, that's when it's a little questionable. And that's when a play action really comes into effect. And that will definitely make a defense be back up on their heels. And I couldn't agree more, Mr. Craddock. With only one, with first and ten, with three wide receivers out and two in the backfield, it's going to be a questionable call for either a run or a pass. But with first and ten, it will be another run. He has room in the middle, but no, the Andrew defense thundering down to tackle him. And that'll be about a gain of... Looks like a gain of zero. They tried to, they tried to do it with the long yardage, first and 10. They did the draw play, which in the shotgun formation made it look like a pass, handed it off. Did not fool our Andrew defense. Not at all. It seems like... Even our, co our defensive coverage, our off or the defensive line chipped to that position, what hole they're going into. And they just blocked him up, stuffed him up where he couldn't go anywhere at all. Another shotgun. Run. And not enough number. And he's not going down. But taken down again by number five, Quincy Daniels, number 23. Kevin Gold and a swarm of other bolt and a swarm of other Andrew Thunderbolts. And you can also notice, Mr. Kravis, our ball boys are actually from the Orland Wolf and Tinley Park Bulldogs. Is that right, Connor? I did not know that. So we got our local celebrities around here, huh? These guys, these guys have been coming in here even when I was younger. These guys would come in here all the time, and they, they feel as much pride as these players on the field. And it's a great way to get started or just get involved in Andrew football. And the pass is completed to number 15 but taken down by number five, Quincy Daniels, by number 11, Cody Hawkinson, and number 91, Sean Tyrell. So it's gonna be about fourth and two. Now if only two yards, what do you think, Mr. Kravitz? Do you think I'm they're gonna punt? I'm anticipating a punt. It's way too early in the game to be playing the risks. And you do not wanna make mental mistakes. You don't even wanna risk it. And especially say if the defense do stop them, they're only 30, away to, 30 yards away from the touchdown. You know, though, Connor, this is a perfect time to do a trick play. Let's see. Here's the punt. And it's a rather short punt. Looked like it went off the side of his foot. About the 45-yard line. And it's going to be down there. And, and don't forget our new concession stand. Plenty of fresh, plenty of fresh fruit, warm hot dogs, warm cheeseburgers, and especially on a cold chilly night, hot chocolate. I had a cup of that hot chocolate. That was a guilty pleasure tonight. And you can see our camera crew, they need some tonight. So number seven, Jacob Platt in the backfield with Jarvion Franklin who got that touchdown last. Let's see if he's gonna hand it off to him and he does again. Oh no, it's a, it's a keeper. Or a keeper. He sheds one, he sheds two. Wow, he's just he can go to the 10, he's moving left. To the 20, touchdown, Jacob Platt. Jacob Platt is kind of a guy who, he's either a runner or he's a, or he's a throw. He can throw well and he can also, he's, he's fast and he's agile, just like a running back. He's a, a perfect, he's, 
he's just an awesome component to the Andrew defense or I, offense. I see a lot of Michael Vick type of athleticism in that play right there. He, I don't think he got touched at all. I think he just kind of weaved in and out of all those defenders. And there was there was a good lot, there was a bunch of defenders right there that he just went through. The trickery definitely made them go the opposite direction, which is a good play call by coach. And here's the extra kick. And it is good. Andrew 14, Corn Ridge 0 just in the first quarter with 6.15.59 left on the clock. You know, Mr. Kravis, I, I'm, I'm help. I just want to know, do you think that uh, Falcon defense are going to try to shift their defense up to, like, just to watch Jacob Platt? Because Jacob Platt is just a, such dangerous where if he, doesn't see the, if he doesn't see the pass, he'll go for the run. If he doesn't see the run, he'll go for the pass. That's true. I, I, what I think, I am not a coach for a reason. <laughs> I leave the coaching to the coaching. But if I was to do something, if I was playing John Madden football, I would definitely make a slight adjustment. I wouldn't make anything major because you want to go with your game plan. You don't want to deviate too far from that because once you start doing that, then things just fall out of place really quickly. And here's the kick. In another long run, will that be a touchback? No, he's going to go for it. Will he find a lane? He's going fast, but quick and hazard, but he's taken down. He gets, that was a hard hit. And it'll be to the 20-yard line. It seems like number two, Amir Aldomani, had the hit. And here's the replay of Jacob Platt just sprinting in the end zone. He doesn't even look winded. That's We're, somebody that's in shape, huh? You know, football, that's all about being in shape. 100 yards there, 100 yards back. <laughs> and just you're quick, you're on your feet, you're thinking. It's, you don't really have time to catch your breath. Well, conditioning is everything because... It, People say football is the fourth quarter game. That means that if you can't play through the fourth quarter and you're the tired team, you're going to lose. You're gonna, well, you're going to lose in the fourth quarter. If it's a close game, you will get rolled over by the, the, the team that has the endurance to get through the fourth quarter. And that was a gain about four yards, but another great stop by the Andrew defense, if you noticed. There's just a swarm of defensive line blocking up that hole, but couldn't do it enough, but still four yards. We'll take that. So 6.32 in the first quarter. T-Bolts 14, Falcon 0. Not a bad start for our Andrew Thunderbolts here. Not all. It seems like once our offense are high, we'll start quick. And our defense, we've been doing an excellent job with this run coverage. Like I said, that's going to be a key component, especially for the Falcons. We've been stopping them, and I think Coach Malik had that incentive in the beginning of the week. Maybe we worked on that run or that run, de run defense coverage. I'm sure that after the scouting, if there is, this is a running team, I'm sure Coach Malik would, would have known that and would have game planned around that. Um, believe it or not, I'm not trying to age anybody, but Coach Malik was one of my coaches when I played football. And believe it or not, he was very intelligent when it came to the other team. And there's, there's, there's no doubt why he is the, the head coach on our football team now. And I agree with you. That's why he's the head coach for a reason. So 6.26 in the first quarter, second and six. We have Quincy Daniels on the left. And we have two wide, two wide receivers and two running backs in the backfield in a shotgun formation. Do you notice, Mr. Kravis, they're also doing the same shotgun as the T-Bolts? Yeah, it seems to be the trend right now, huh? Is this a timeout on the field? And there seems to be a flag on the play. Let's see what the referees say for. Everybody, I'd like to take this time to introduce the new announcer. And we're going to bring in our very, our very own Mike Brennan. Mike Brennan, who has been playing sophomore football as a kicker, got a little tangled back. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, Connor. How are you doing? We're doing great as the T-Bolts, 14, Falcon 0. You missed a lot. You missed the anticipation of the crowd see right here. They're excited. They're happy. And you can see the... They're showing off their Andrew alumni. Yeah, I'm sorry about missing the little bit of uh, the first half because I was helping a teammate that fell in the parking lot. Billy O'Donnell fell and possibly chipped his knee. So our best wishes out to him. And here, here's, here's the trick play to number 80, and it's a, it's a lateral. 
but taken down by number 83. And a flag on the play. Taken down. What I'm assuming right now is a hold, possibly. Let's see what the referee said. And, and a face mask. Hold in. A face against mask the against the Thunderbolts. Face mask. And like we said before, Mike, that's really going to cost him because now second and six is going to be second and one. You know, that's a... That's kind of, that's actually going to move the chains. So 5.56 in the first quarter. Now what are you expecting out of this play, Mike? You know, I haven't really seen much of the Thornridge players at the varsity level right now. Well, but if it's anything like their sophomore team, it really seems like they're probably going to go for more of a run play because their running backs going to be very here's strong. The pass. And it is caught, but taken, out of, taken down by out of bounds. Number five, Quincy Daniels, who's been who's been just successful in this season. You know, last year he played safety. He played a little bit of defensive back. He played a little bit of even strong safety, short safety. And now he's going, he's found his set position in outside linebacker. And I'm telling you, Mike, he, could, he can do more of a good job. He's, he's doing, doing great at it. Doesn't seem like anybody was really being able to catch up with him. And we're talking about the defense, which is first, second and five. And you can see there's three wide receivers. He's looking. And number 15 was untouched. And a broken tackle. By, but taken down by number number five, Quincy Daniels, but intended tackle to Cody Hawkinson. Hey, no, Connor, I don't know if you and Mike already talked about this, but what are you expecting out of tonight's game since it is homecoming? I know a ton of fans came out. The whole student section is overflowing as I walked up. You know, Mike, just like we said with the, the like, we, like we talked about with the momentum. Momentum is a key component of a game. If, he, if we hear the crowd... They're going to get more excited. They get more excited. We're going to stop more plays because just of that adrenaline. And here's the run. He gets more than get more than enough. And and there's an empty. There's a helmet off the field by Man. by number ninety. By number ninety one. Correction. Sean, Sean Tyrell, Tyrell, the six five two hundred and twenty five defensive lineman. So 447 in the first quarter. We're gonna we're gonna have to stop them now, Mike. They're in field goal territory. So three two running backs out. And it's and another it, run. He finds one lane, but finally taken down a gain of about four or five yards. Taken down by number nine, our safety, Dan Durkin. You know, Dan Durkin, he's had a great year this year. He's been involved in every single home game that we've had. You know, Mike Harity has over five interceptions. Really? Correct. Yeah, that's a great thing to hear, especially since they've had, what, about five games? Yes, and you know, Mike, talking about the Falcons, we, we, me and Mr. Kevs, we were talking about a balanced offense, a, ba a balanced offense. It seems like they're passing, they're running, and just the, the Thunderbolts are kind of confused. Look, are we going to pass? Are we going to run? And it's kind of bringing them off, off ship. And, and is it intercepted? Number six for Dan Durkin. And it was picked off by number nine, Dan Durkin. That's his sixth interception now this season, Connor. That was excellent, Mike. Did you notice our, our outside linebacker, we played a net, our outside linebacker, he tipped the ball. Dan Durkin was just not even thinking about it, not even stopping because he thought the ball was tipped. He went right for it. You know, that's something you got to do, a selfish thing out there. And, you know, with the temperature being extremely cold, seeing your breath right now, and it's only September. And as Doug or Jake Platt comes out, and we're going to give it a drive again. No, it's a keeper again. You know, Mike, that's been getting you. This keeper, this is, they've been doing an excellent job. Like, just fake handing it off. You know, the more, the faster you are at this, the faster you are with the handoff, the faster you are with the fake, the better, the, just the more successful it's going to be because it's going to throw off your whole entire defense. So a free 30 in the first quarter. And is there offside? Let's see, let's see what offside is for. False start. All sides, correction. On the Falcons, so that's going to be a five-yard penalty. So it's going to be second in one. So instead of that five yards, we're going to only need one more. Yeah, that's a great help to the T-Bolts, especially on a little Thornridge blunder. Like we always say, one mistake can be very critical. And let's see if our, our, our offense, Jake Platt, is going to take advantage of that. The strip's right. Let's see. Shocker for me. He's going to pass. There's one coming out. But take, but Pat caught by Jenna Vilamek. Jenna Vilamek to the 50. 
to the 40. He needs one more blocker, and he has it. 20, 10. Dennis Villanick going in for the touchdown. He's merely jogging. And the block that saved him was his teammate, number 34, Danny Ball. You know, you don't give Danny Ball much credit. Out. He can catch. He can, but he's more, more useful as a blocker. As you saw in that last play, he shed him. He, he sprinted up with, with um, Dennis Villanick, and he just shed that block so Dennis Villanick can give the Andrew alumni a TD. So it's going to be 20 to nothing T-Bolts and just 3-0-3 left in the first quarter. You know, and really, you wouldn't think Dan Ball would be such a great blocker since he's actually such a small kid. He, you know, not height-wise, he's six foot two, but only 180 pounds for that height. Doesn't really seem like too much of a bulky guy, but he really showed he can block in that play right there. With Michael Aylers ready to get it set for the extra point. And it's a boot. And it's going to be 21 T-Bolts, Falcons zero. Already in the first quarter, what are you expecting? Are you expecting a nice 96-point game out of this if they keep this up? You know, Mike, it could be questionable with the Falcons. Remember, football is a lot. Of, it's, it's a game of minutes. Three minutes is a lot in a football game. Falcons still have a chance to stop the defense, stop the run, and still just score touchdowns. But they're going to have to get their act together now before the second quarter. So Michael Ayler is coming again to boot the ball. And we can see our Andrew Palms. They're dressed for the weather, don't you think, Mike? Yeah, they really are in their full jumpsuits, it looks like. You know, they, do a, they do an awful lot of dancing and just, do you, want, you, want to stay, you want to stay warm when they're not dancing, you know what I'm saying, Mike? Exactly. You, you can't dance every game or every minute. So Michael Aylers, here's the kick. It's a boot. Again, and a touchback. Be, remember, he keeps saying that he's consistent in touchbacks. I don't think it's a strategy. He's just... He hits the ball so well, like we're talking about. And here's the replay of Dennis Villamick. Scoring the touchdown. Just trotting. Trotting in the end zone with that excellent black by Danny Ball. So 3-0-3 in the first quarter. The Thornridge Falcons will start at their own 20-yard line after Mike Ayler's touchback. Now, Connor, you see more of these drives than I have. What do you think is really going to happen in this drive? In this drive, I think this can go either way. Like I said, they've been pretty well balanced. They're keeping the defense on their heels. They can go pass. They can go run. And it's about, it looks like it's going to be another run. And it's taken down. No, they said he wasn't going to get it. And it's 35. But I think about taken down by number 35. Kevin, Kevin Walsh. And right now we're getting a close-up of the team's huddle in. And there was just no game. The defense stopped him. They blocked up that hole what he was going to go into, and they said, you're not getting it. There seems to be a dead ball, though. An unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, Mike, especially if we really do not like to see the unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, it's just something that you really have to control. It's just a lot of the time... It's just maybe a curse word here or there or an over-excessive celebration. But, you know, that's something that you really just got to, you got to keep it classy, Connor. And the coaches don't even, they don't like it either, assuming. You, know, you always train your players, you always tell them, be good. Don't make good decisions. Don't get caught doing something stupid. And, well, with that happening. And it's a pass play. He finds his man. Nearly intercepted by number 23, Kevin Golden. Which, remember, it is his 18th birthday, so a win is very crucial for him, or for the celebration part. You don't want to celebrate a birthday when you lost the game, huh, Mike? You never want to lose any game, no matter what day it is. So third and ten. There's 228 left in the first quarter. And, you know, Mike, if you did you see the Andrew homecoming parade? I didn't get a chance to because of the sophomore game, but I heard it was great. An excellent way just to wrap up homecoming. With all, with all our clubs coming together, binding, we create the T-Board. Together we bring the T-Board storm. And that's what we exactly did right there. And here's the pass. He's scrolling. He He's just scrambling. can't find anyone. He has room. But taken down by number 33. Nick Ennis. Nick Ennis. The junior, 5'11", 165 pounds. Now that's a small, that's a small guy for a running back. You know, it really is. Or for a defensive back. 
2-12 in the first quarter. And you can, you can see the rain coming, Mike. And, you know, rain is very... I'm just worried about with the wide receivers, but when it's raining, you know, they're very... Like it, it's harder to catch, and with the cold, that doesn't help too much. It's very hard just to grip the ball. And they're going to pass again. And there's going to be a spread. But no, taken down by number 35, Kevin Walsh, our senior, 6 foot, 215 pound. Loss of two on the play now. It will now be second and 12. With 134 in the first quarter. You know, a lot of the times with these games where it seems like the T-Bolts are really just absolutely dominating to the opponent, you know, sometimes the other team, they'll come back and it can really bite you in the end if you let your guard down just a little bit. And you know, Mike, I hate to change subject, but because we've been talking about the Vipers finally getting your after off today, I just want to see the lucky person's face who wins it. Oh, you know, that's always an exciting moment, especially maybe they might get to drive it across the turf. That would be great. So if three wide receivers out, it's a pass play again. He has room. He has a hole. And he's going to take advantage of that. Shed one, shed two, but finally taken down at the 39-yard line. Or at the 40, 44-yard line. The quarterback right now, he's really a double threat from his arm that I've seen. It's not the most accurate at times, but it has tons of power behind it. And also being able to scramble like that and break tackles like a running back, he's really a double threat. You know, he reminds me of our Jacob Platt. As you can see, if you weren't here in the last, he scored a touchdown at a, about over a 20-yard drive. Wow. And it was a quarterback keeper. So 20 Good seconds down. left in the first quarter. And the snap. And it's a, it's a run play. But not and enough, I believe. What do you think, Mike? Not at close at all. Do you think they're going to go for this or do you think they're going to punt it? You know, fourth and six, remember, it's still in the first or rather, still in the second quarter. We do not, we do not want to make risky mistakes, especially when the Andrews up this much. Because that just gives us another, that just, it gives us another chance. It gives, it gives our team another chance to score the, like, for great yardage. You know, and the at the end of the, go for it. And at the end of the second quarter, with T-Bolts already leading by three touchdowns to none, and it's been a perfect, a perfect atmosphere for homecoming. Already up three touchdowns, and the fans, they're wild, they're excited. I'm hearing the boo boo sweaters already, which is a just a great tradition for the Andrew Thunderbolts. You which know, I really thought was in soccer, Mike. You know, hopefully right now the boo boo sales will catch on to a point. Maybe the school can sell them. And you can see Andrew T-shirts for the special homecoming occasions. Already be ta already being thrown. So 12 minutes in the second quarter, you can see Coach Malik. And looks like they're going to punt it with Dennis Villamick back deep to return. Like we said, Dennis Villamick is a dangerous one. If you give, if our offense or if our defenders in this case, if our blockers give him a lane, he's gone. He's a fast, quick, agile man, and he doesn't even seem like he's winded. In a short punt, and it's going to be out of bounds. So at the 31-yard line, Jacob Platt will give his will give his offense another chance. Yeah, that seems like an absolutely great field position right now for the Thunderbolts. And I'd like to see if Jarvin and Franklin will have another chance to score another touchdown, which he did back in the first quarter. You know, his offensive, his offensive line, he bonded him a hole, and he just jammed right through it. You know, Connor, right now with the homecoming dance being tomorrow night, it just seems like this week has just gone by so fast. And just, I couldn't agree more with you, Mike. With just, it's, it's amazing. And this is still going to happen. Our, our, one second, Mike. And it's Dennis Villamek. Will he have room in the outside? He does. He, gets he needs through. one more. He needs two, but it's taken down, but more than, more than enough for a first down. Oh, I'd say a lot more. But there seems to be a flag on a play. And holding against the Thunderbolts. That's what I was assuming. You know, Mike, with a great run like that, that's something Dennis Philman does not want to see that. He worked hard. He worked, he worked hard getting that gain. You know, and so did all his blockers as well, working very hard to get him that almost 20-yard run. So it's on a first and 10 in the back. It's going to be about... First and 10 at the 26-yard line. You know, that's a really tough thing to see with 
you know, it's just getting pushed back that far after a run that good. So like like I was saying, like this isn't over like with the music and with the with the themes. Andrew does a very great job providing for that like for that atmosphere. You know, but the homecoming week. And, and it seems like not enough for the trick play, but Jake Platt is going to come up hard, and it's going to be first and 21, not first and 10, at the 15. You know, number 34, Danny Ball, he really, he tricked everybody up here. I was watching Ball. So it's going to be second and 16, with 11-14 in the second quarter. And the motion, man. There's going to be three, four wide receivers out, including Dennis Minimek. Trips left. Jarvan in the backfield. And it's a pass. He finds a man. It's Dennis Minimek. Dennis Minimek catches it, but taken down immediately at the 50-yard line. That's going to be more than enough for a first town. I know with the attempted strip right there you saw by the Thornridge player, Dennis Minimek had very strong, you know, strong that was a, being able to hold that. That was a very good. That was a good, very good example of fundamentals. Even back in grade school, when first grade, they, they teach you to hold the ball for your life, even when you're running, because you never know who's behind, just ready to strip at it. So Dennis Phil, or Den Jacob Platt hands it off to Jarvion. Jarvion, he finds a lane. He finds more than that. He's getting he past the first one. down. He gets the first down after being tripped up by a Thornridge player. He nearly dodges that one, but he was tripped up. He wasn't tackled. He was tripped up. Jarvion, you know, he's an absolutely stupendous player. And if you see his face, that's a prime example of a competitor. He's just ready to keep going. He's ready to get another opportunity to shine, to bring a touchdown to yeah. our team. And I'd like to point out something very odd right now. The Falcons are taking their first timeout with 10.34 left in the second quarter. Remember, they do still have two timeouts left. You know, but in the last sophomore game, after the kickoff, the first thing the Falcons did was call a timeout. That's very odd because usually coaches like to use that for key or important drives. Say if you're down by just a touchdown and there's 30 seconds left in the game and the exactly. clock's just running and running. You want to stop that so you have time to take advantage. And so, you know, the fan section really right now for Andrew, it's still filling up. It's still spilling over. I'm really surprised more of the bleachers haven't been taken. You know, Mike, there's not even any room in the bleachers. If you can see right next to the home or the concession stand, they're just not there for the food. They're there because there's no, nowhere else to go. And, and you see all the Andrew people. It's a blackout tonight. There, it must be a scary thing when you look over at the Thornridge stands. You see maybe 40 at the most people over there. That's unbelievable, Mike. I'm, we're very fortunate for the T-Bolts. Football squad are very fortunate to have such loyal fans. You know, T-Bolt fans, you know, it really seems like they're probably the best fans anyone's ever going to have. So three wide receivers out, but there's a flag. Let's see what's for, Mike. And with 10-34 in the second quarter, T-Bolt's 21, Falcon 0. There's going to be numerous flags on the play. Oh, the referees are now talking it over. Now, you wonder what a coach is thinking about when that flag happened, you know, how did it happen? Who did it? And it's a false start against the offense, which will push him back five more yards. And you can see Mike Dwyer a little upset on that, saying you, know, you can do better. I think any coach would be pretty mad about that. It's just a penalty that just shouldn't happen. <laughs> With Jarvion and Dennis in the backfield. That's dangerous. So here's the, here's the motion. And it's going to be a Ball. run to number 34, Danny Ball. Danny Ball, he has, two, he has a blocker. Jarvion, Jarvion with the block. And there's to the 10, to the 20, but taken down. That was an excellent block by number 32, Jarvion Franklin. He took all he had, and he just plummet. He just trucked you know, the defender. The, block, the blockers on this, whenever there's a block, it really just seems like a selfish decision. I want my teammate to get farther. I want us to win. It's something you do for the team, not just for yourself. You know, Mike, that, did, that first and 15 had no effect on Dennis Zillamick and Danny Ball and Jake Platt. You know, but you have to wonder... What would have happened if we didn't get that? Motion to Dennis Villanick. He has room outside, but does he? But taken down in the backfield. He's eaten alive in the backfield. You know, Mike, I think that I, my personal opinion, the defense, Falcons defense really stepped up to that because if you remember, they, they went outside, they were getting sufficient yards, and now they probably moved their offense or their outside linebackers. 
more to the left, more to the right, so they can prevent that. And with Jarvion Franklin in the backfield with him. 9.33 in the second quarter. Motion, man. And they give it off to Danny Ball. No, oh, it's, it's a keeper. It's a keeper again. And Platt taken down hard by a Thornridge linebacker. Platt does just an excellent job in, keep, in, be, in being the quarterback keeper. Yeah, so, and one of the most important things he does is hold on to that ball and make sure he doesn't let go. So with 39, it's very crucial to get this nine yards so we can still have an opportunity. And with just nine minutes left the on the clock, you know, the team will still have plenty of time, but I think what everybody wants to see right here is a huge blowout for the t bolts favor. That just that sets up the momentum, Mike. And here's the pass. He has time. Floated He's in the end zone. It. And it's going to be a touchdown number 80. Zach Klauski. Yeah, and Zach Klauski, we've been saying every week, week in and week out, he's an important player. And when he really needs to make a big play, he makes a big play. And what did he just do, Connor? Made a big play. Now, I was talking to Zach Klauski at, at, the, beginning, at the beginning of Monday. And he says every, fir every 30 minutes before the game, he just looks at his hands. So when he catches the ball, he'll be looking at his hands when he, while he catches the ball. You know, that's an important thing to do. Make sure your hands are in the right position and make sure that your hands just look right. You know, even college alumni do that. And you can see our cheerleaders. Just another excellent example of homecoming spirit. Everyone out there, even though it's cold. And here's the kick. Michael Ehlers does it again for Andrew, 28, 400, 0. And right now, you're... You'd be thinking that they'd be a little bit more careful with the Viper with it being, with it being finally raffled off tonight. I just, you know, it's still sitting back there. You know, Mike, I just cannot wait. Cannot wait just to see that look on the face. And Dennis and Michael Ehlers come out to kick the ball hard. So at 8.49 in the second half, or in the first quarter, second quarter. And number 13 again, Mike Ehlers will be coming out to kick the ball off. So see, is it going to be another touchdown, touchback, Mike? Yeah, I'm assuming so with Mike Ehlers' leg. Absolute cannon. So fans on their feet, you can feel the rumbling just in the press box. Here's and here he comes. And it's, and it's a deep one, but it's not good enough for a touchback. Especially for Mike Ehlers' taste. And he finds one lane, number number 15. Gets around 23. He finds another. Quincy Dan's going to try to get him. Quincy Dan with an arm tackle, but finally taken down by number 55. Bill Peters, the senior outside linebacker, 5'7 and 180 pounds. Here's a short man. It's going to be first and 10 for the Falcons on the 47-yard line. You know, you know, like just a halftime. The know, half, just a halftime game is going to be even more special because they're adding an extra minute for more team spirit. And more craziness to be allowed by the fans. So 8.39 in the second quarter. There's only two wide receivers, three wide receivers out and two running backs in the backfield. Along with the quarterback number 11 motioning. And it's a run but taken down shortly. He's absolutely crushed by the T-ball players right now. By number 47 and number 55. Number 55, Bill Peters, and 47, Brett Leifker. You know, I'm just loving what Coach Maddox is doing with the defense. Whenever there's a run, they just he shifts slightly to the left, slightly to the run, and they just black up that hole. So with two wide receivers out and three men in the backfield, there's a motion. And to be a quarterback keeper again. He can't find anything. And he is pushed out of bounds by a swarm of Andrew. So that's going to be no gains. So it's going to be about second and eight or 7.52 in the second quarter. Or correction, that was a loss. Third and ten. You know, Mike, the defense, the defense is really stepping up from last game, or from Sag's game, because if you remember, we let up 20 points. It was 20 to 27. You know, that was also two weeks ago, and in two weeks, a lot of improvement can happen. Especially with Coach Malik's defense and Coach Malik's leadership. 
he really, he really thinks that football is a big deal, and he just strives for excellence. And here's the pass. Number 58 coming in. He's looking, and it's a gun. Perhaps too hard. It was pass intended to number 22. 23. 23. And Quincy Daniels on the tip to get that ball. Gone. You know, do you think the cold has a factor of catching the ball? You know, it has to. The ball's going to be harder naturally. And your hands, they're going to be in a lot of... Your, the blood's going to be rushing away from your hands. And it's just going to be it's gonna sting when catching it. So maybe the first time he catches it, you're like, ow, oh, that hurts. And then the third time he catches it, he's, he's, he's going to be hesitant in how he catch, the way he catches it. And now so, seven minutes and 46 seconds left after the incompletion. So two, there's, there seems to be a timeout in the second quarter. Or it's a timeout. Charge to the Charge Thunderbolts. Charge to the Thunderbolts. You know, very odd thing we don't really normally see from the Thunderbolts. But remember, they still have two more timeouts. And you see the whole coaching squad is getting ready to prep up their defense. And now with the defense coming back out after the timeout, just seeing make maybe a little change in the defense. But I don't see one at this point. So fourth and ten. You've got to think if it's fourth and ten, what are they going to do, punt? I believe punt, but maybe they're going to go for it just for the long run, because it is you know, 28 nothing. It looks like right now, for the formation they're setting up, it's going to be a punt. So we have not only Dennis Vilmic, but also Dan Durkin in the backfield. And so see Dennis Vilmic on the screen now. By this formation, they're looking to run with the ball. Or the That's a very low punt. Intended for Dennis Vilmic. Dennis Vilmic is going to try to shed. He's going to try to shed another one. He sheds it's two. two. He has room. He has blockers. One he out. He has a hole to the 30, to the 20, to the, the 10. 10. Touchdown, Dennis Villamick. That excellent punt return and an excellent, just an. And Connor, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that his second touchdown of the night? That's his second touchdown of the night. You know what I liked about that, Mike? The blockers did their job. He filed Dennis Villamick. He gave him a lane, and he just, and you can see our very own Carl Evans showing just, Showing his Andrew Pride. And every single person giving Dennis Villamick that pat on the head, pat on the butt. You know, Mike, Telling him, good job, good job. You did I'm, right. I'm just really excited with the blockers. He, if it wasn't for the blockers, Dennis Villamick would not get that touchdown. Yeah, and the first blocker that started that all was Dan Durkin in the backfield. Dan Durkin just shed that block, gave it his all. And Dennis Villamick was able to commit and just filed his blockers block after block. So 720 in the second quarter. t bolts 34. Falcons nothing, and here's the extra kick, every extra point. To be taken by Michael Ehlers. Michael Ehlers with the kick. Low and good. And that was almost no good. Now, what do you think happened there? Was there a miscommunication or was it just... I think he did it on purpose. Maybe have a little bit of fun. So now Andrew, 35, and you can still see Mike Dwyer, even a smile coming off him with such an excellent And here's game. the replay of Dennis Villamick's touchdown. And you can see the blockers too. Then you can just, you can see the smile on his face, committing the homecoming and giving the crowd something to come for. And you can see all the Andrew fans in the background of that replay going absolutely crazy for Dennis Villamick. So, so we can see it. We can see Michael Ehlers coming again for a second shot to maybe even get another touchback. Because you know how consistent he is for those. And now the fan section shot. And the, the music's just pumping him up. Crowd rolling. Mike Ailes with the kick. kick. And it's another bomb, but not a touchback. You think his legs lane. get a little tired after all the scoring the T-Bolts have been doing? You know, Mike, I, you're a kicker. How does it feel kicking the ball? What's the, fo what's the formation of it? You know, it's just, you, you run through your steps, and you just don't think about it. You just, it just comes naturally if you do it right. So 7-10 in the second quarter, you can even see Andrew's very own marching band coming out to, just to perform an excellent halftime show, which stay tuned, by the way. And you know, with the homecoming assembly today, how did you like that, Connor? You know, it really told us, Mike Swartz, the head of the student council, really told us, look, we're a team here. We bring the funder together. If you need help, go to a senior. Go to a soft junior. Don't be afraid. 
And it just, it even shows us in football. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And, you know, Mike Zwart's replacing his big brother, Tim. So, 7-10 in the second quarter. The quarterback, he finds a man, but no. And it's an incomplete pass. You know, it seems like there was a tip in that one. So 7-0-4 in the second quarter. And it's something that, we've, that I saw in the sophomore game and that I'm seeing now. You know, the Andrew players and the Thornridge players, you know, though they both want to just absolutely just kick the poop out of each other, they're, they're being kind to each other. They're helping each other up when they can. They're showing respect toward each other. So if Seth, well, you know, if you're going to be classy, they're going to be classy too, Mike. That's just common principle. And there's the pass floated up. And taken down by number 35. Ball out. And there's a ball. And let's see who recovers it. And are they going to rule it a fumble? And Looks like they will not be ruled a fumble. So that's going to be a second and 10. Ball on the 30, no, ball on the 31 yard line, you know, second in, down. In my opinion, Connor, I think the officials down there, they had it right. It looked like he was down before the fumble occurred. I believe so too, Mike. And so that's going to be third and three. Oh, remember, three yards. I'm expecting, what are you expecting? It's either going to be a run or pass with third down and just three yards. I'm expecting a quarterback keeper. You know, right now, I'm actually expecting more of a, maybe a pitch outside. Well, let's see what happens, Mike. With Quincy Daniels and just four running or four linebackers out and four wide receivers and up the middle taken down hard by number 65 Fred Kessel our senior defensive line man, 240 pounds but that's still enough for the Falcons to be first and 10 with 624 in the second quarter yeah that's something that you really like to see right now you know with 620 left in the second quarter and you know, they're down by 35 points. They finally got a break. You know, it, I just love to see what the coaches, what, what the coaches plan are at the end of the half. So with, with four wide receivers out, he goes for a pass. No one's here. He finds a lane, but no. He's taken finally down. Taken down, taken down hard. 65. Fred Castle. Craig Castle just did business. He's a big old linebacker, or defensive line. He got the job done. 240 pounds. That's going to be, you know, they say a lot of running backs in the NFL, they say the next day, the next day, they just felt like they get hit by a car. You know, why wouldn't they? Constantly getting hit, blocking, doing every imaginable thing they can out there. So at 531 in the second quarter, second and 10 Falcons. And now as you see the offense preparing, trips right. And it's another pass play. And he, he finds a lane, but he decides to throw it. And Dan nearly picked Durkin. up by number nine, Dan Durkin. You know, I didn't, he just blocked that away. There's not much he could do with that. It was too high for him to catch, so he just put his hand out and whopped the ball out. Yeah, and it looked like he got enough. his whole palm on that ball. And don't, don't forget, the Vipers going today. And you know, the Viper, it's, it's an exciting thing to see who's ever going to get that car. You know, Mike, you they've know. been raffling it out for two years. Yeah, that's a long time, and they sold, I believe it's 5,000 tickets for $20. You do them half. I'm no good at arithmetic. Yeah, neither am I, Connor. Neither am I. So it's third and ten. Five minutes and ten seconds left in the second quarter. And there's trips, there's trips right. And one man in the back. And it's going to be a quarterback keeper. Like, oh! oh. He is strong-armed by an Andrew player. That and was all coming out, but then easily recovered by the Falcons. There's, there's a personal foul. You know, face mask gets the T-Bowls. That's a stupid penalty that should not have been happened. That's you know, something you learn in first grade. Don't grab their face mask. You know, Mike, that was actually, that was also just an, just a, just a heck of a hit. It, it I was, you can't screamed. take that away from him. That just had to hurt, and I just give it to the quarterback for just, Standing right up and getting back to business. So a third and ten with a personal max that's going to bring it up to about, is that five or ten yards? You know, I believe that will be a first and ten now because of the face mask, a 15-yard penalty. Like we said, just imagine if they... It's a 15-yard first and ten. Just a terrible mistake. 
You know, we talk about this a lot, Mike. Stupid mistakes will initially cost the game in, someone, in, some, in some situations. And here's the pass. Ball overthrown by the quarterback. Seems like he's better at the running game than the passing. Well, at this situation, Tebow's 35. They really need to try to score quickly. In running, it seems like it's just not doing it with the, with the Andrew defense. They really, they really stepped up with their run coverage. So they're just trying anything to score at least a touchdown. You know, they got to be getting desperate now, being down by 35 points. So 452 in the second quarter. There's three, there's three wide receivers, no, four wide receivers out. And there's only one man in the backfield, along with, our court, with their quarterback, number 12, the quick and agile. We don't have his name at this moment. Dwayne Davis. And it looks like a late block by one of the Thorn Ridge players, but the referees seem to just knock that one off. So if, if the Johnson pass complete, it's going to be... It's going to be on the 35 yard, the 35 yard line. The first and 10 Falcons. So 4.35 in the second quarter. And it seems like they're going to go again with, with two wide receivers on each side. Here's the pass. He has room. But there's one man in the back. And oh. nearly t picked off again by number 23. Kevin Golden, and he does not seem happy with himself, no. knowing that he could have gotten that. I just said that their run coverage was doing an excellent job. Same with their pass coverage. That's two, two almost intercepted passes in just, th just one series. That's a tough thing to see. 4-18 in the second quarter. T-Bolt 35, Falcon 0. And now with them setting up for defense, you know, the Falcons take a little bit longer time than they normally do. But there seems to be holding against the Falcons. So it's going to be second in two, or second in 25, my correction. And that's, that's going to be a long conversion. Especially with this Andrew defense. And a timeout charge to the Falcons. Is that their final timeout? You know, no, they still have one more, Connor. Their second timeout. In just of the first half now. So 418 in the second quarter. And you can see Coach Matt, you can see Coach Piatrek, our athletic director. They're talking to Coach Dreyer. Now, Coach Piedrick, he's one of the key components of BGA TV crew. This is why this is all here. And we also can't forget to thank everybody else who is also involved in this program. A lot of, com a lot of time, commitment, and just dedication. Being here till 10.30 and coming to school at 8. So 4.18 in the second quarter. Our and right now it's still second and 25 after the timeout. Quarterback Howard Delante, Alante, coming out on track information. And it's a quarterback keeping. No, he's in a throw. But nearly oh, intercepted, intercepted again by, by number, number 23, Kevin Golden. You know, another great. Another great shot. It's just trying to intercept it. He got. He gave it his all, and he just dove, dove for it. So, and don't forget, folks. Andrew Spearantwear is on sale now at the concession stand. Get all your Andrew alumni at a low and costable price. Costable, affordable price. And you can see, <laughs> you can see Coach Dreyer out there, who's also the track coach. And with just four minutes and 12 seconds left in the second quarter, the first half, T-Bolts are still absolutely destroying the Falcons. They just struck them out of the sky. And here's the pass. He has room. He's scrambling. And nice catch by number 11, but it was neat, so he can't get anywhere. Number 11. 
Number one. Anatante Howard. So it's going to be still with that excellent pass. It's going to be fourth and two. You know, so that's this a tough is a thing to see, especially when they just got an amazing pass just like that. This is a this is a situation. This is a situation where you. This is a situation where you got to ask yourself, what are they? Are they going to punt or are they are, are they going to field goal or are they going to score? Or are they going to attempt to score? If only two yards, and it's quarterback keeper, but taken down hard by number thirty-five. And, and right now, it doesn't really look like it won't. It will be enough, but you know, everything's possible. Nice tackle by number 35, Kevin Walsh. So, so the Andrew offense will take down, and the defense just did an excellent job in manning their positions. So, so Jake Platt will have to work for three minutes till the second half. You know, three minutes, that's a lot of time for the team, especially with receivers and quarterback and everything right now. Now, 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 do you really think? Do you, do you think Jake Platt will be able to score in the second, or to score in one more drive? With I have no left? doubt in my mind that he will. And giving off to Jarvan Franklin. No. Nope. He finds another lane. He finds more than that. To the 50, to the, the 40, the 30, the 20, <laughs> the 10, and a touchdown. touchdown. Jarvan Franklin, number two. <laughs> An amazing touchdown run, and like I said. Three minutes and eight seconds was more than enough time for the T Bulls to score that touchdown. That was just less. That was less than 20 seconds. And they got all the way down the field, almost 69 yards. It seems like. In just the for first, the touchdown. In just the first half, T Bulls 41, Falcons zero, and you can see everyone just congratulating Jarvie and Franklin with just an excellent run, and again an excellent block for that open hole. His blockers, they really did save him on that one because they were coming down hard. And the fans, they're just stunned. Speechless, it seems like. So Michael Ehlers ready to make this a 42-0 ball game. And 42-0. Connor, I think my prediction may be right of a 96-point ball game. We picked it right, Jay, to work on this job, huh, Mike? I did. You know, like, I also noticed on the sideline that a lot of varsity from last year, seniors from last year, came out to support their, their, their football teams on homecoming. You know, who are some of the people that you've seen down there so far? I see, I see, num I see Mr. Alan Bonney, who was a defensive lineman last year, coming up to support his team. And here's the excellent re or replay, replay of Jarvion Franklin making that touchdown to make the ball game 42 zip. 253 left in the second half. Do you believe that? And here's Michael Ehlers now setting up for the kickoff. Michael Ehlers, the fans are already on their feet. You can hear the stumbling in the press box. Here's the kick. A little bit longer than his last one. Does he, can he find a lane? But no, almost taken down by Aldo Bonney. But finally taken down by number 42, Nick Francano. So let's see if the Andrew defense can stop him with just 240 in the le in left in the second half, or the first half. Now, did you really think Andrew's alumni expected this from the Andrew T-Boats? You know, you always want to see your Andrew T-Boats win, but I don't think anybody expected 42 nothing before and it was a, halftime. It was a lateral, but he can't get anything at all. Taken down by number 35, Kevin Walsh. You know, Kevin Walsh, he's really been all over this game today. The senior linebacker, 6 foot and 215 pounds. And I really show it with second and 13, a loss of three. Less than two minutes in the second quarter. And you know what you know what else I noticed that's diff that's different to high school football to college or um, NFL football? What have you noticed, Connor? There seem there seem to be in the NFL 
there's no huddle whatsoever just to get that defense like on their heels, not knowing what they're going to do, not giving them enough time. And there's the pass, and it's a shot, but finally taken down by Kevin Wallace, or taken down right away, rather, by Kevin Wallace. So that's going to be a gain of about... A, I'd say about maybe a first down. That's going to be more than a... That's going to be a first down. Correction. Or gain of about eight. Third and five for the Falcons. So at one of, with less than a minute, stop, stop. With, a le with, with less than a minute in the half. It's a pass. And he's looking. Pass completed. But then taken down by Kevin Walsh. That's going to be more than enough for a, for, for a first down. With 46 seconds left on the clock. You know, it seems like they do have an opportunity to get down there, but if the T-Bulls defense holds up like they have been, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, I'm really surprised in how well the defense came together. First from Stag, then just two weeks of preparation, or two weeks of further improvement. They're just unstoppable right now. Yeah, that's a great thing to see. There's no reason why they shouldn't win their conference. 28 seconds and counting. It seems to me that, that the Falcons are going to try to score quickly. So here's the pass. He's looking, and it's a bomb, but almost oh, intercepted. Intercepted by number 23 again. Kyle, or Kevin, Kevin Golden. Golden. Happy birthday, Kevin Golden. Hopefully for his birthday present, he'll get an interception. Nearly intercepted. And you can see Kevin Golden doing push-ups because he didn't catch it. Now that's committed. So there's, so, so there's going to be a timeout charge to the Falcons. Now, why would you think, you know, in this situation, I, I think the reason they called that, that timeout, because look at the score. It's 42 to nothing. They just play, they're basically playing just for respect here, Mike. It really seems like that right now, too, because there is no mercy rule in high school football. In any situation, in any, any team looking just for one goal, to win state, to bring that plaque, to bring that, that Illinois State, or you know what I'm saying, Mike. I know exactly what you're saying. It's that Illinois structure to be on the gym wall. And here's the pass. But he seemed like he tripped. You know, and also here tonight, I'd like to point out, Doug Platt, Jake Platt's older brother is here. Jake Platt just did an excellent job. And you know, Mike, he still has one more year. And this is and at halftime. It is now 42 nothing. This has been Connor Burns and Mike Brennan, and we'll be back after the half.
And we continue our halftime extravaganza for homecoming 2012, your varsity pop squad, under the direction of Miss Julie Maddox. Lady, the field is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Marching Band Halftime 2012. The Angel Marching Thunderbolts are pleased to present their field show for the 2012 season. This year's show is entitled, From the Ashes We Rise. Tonight, the band will perform the entire production. The band has a new look this season with their new uniform. The band thanks District 230 for their support. Andrew High School is proud to present a halftime performance. Drum majors Laura Rodriguez, Allison Bowen, and Grace Garcia, and the victor at Jay Andrew High School, marching Thunderbolts.
ladies and gentlemen, it is the time we are waiting for. We are doing this strong in 15 minutes and 20 minutes, about nine months. At this time, I'd like to introduce our district club president, Ms. Lena Sheehan. Congratulations, Molly Dinnan. Molly Dinnan, you have just won this card. Is Molly in the stands? <laughs> Molly, are you here? If you're here, come down. Uh, we're going to call Molly right now. Bishop Road, Timmy Park, you have won the 2003 Dodge Viper. Congratulations. And while we're here, take out your red cookbook. We do have a split spot. $280. The winning number is 996 Thanks for everyone who participated in this drawing today. The boosters, the songs, the people, the students, and all the parents. Thank you for your participation in this raffle. Sorry.
As we begin the second half, number 13, Mike Ehlers, set to kick off for the Thunderbolts. Don't forget, T-Bolt fans, at the conclusion of the game, a spectacular fireworks show to celebrate homecoming 2012. Weather permitting, where dreams come true. Hopefully you can dream the bad weather away. Baylor's kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. First and ten for the Falcons. Hello, Andrew fans, and we are back for another exciting. Hello, Andrew fans, and we are back for another exciting second half of Andrew football. And if you notice, Michael Aylers with another excellent, if not just fantastic, touchback. So it's curious to see if if the uh, T-Bolts defense are going to be able to like hold, like just. Keep that position, you know. Now they have been for the whole game already. Here's a little confusion on the play. And there's four wide receivers out. One in the backfield. Has to be up in the middle. He finds a lane. He finds more. And They're it looks like he only down. got a gain of about four or five yards on that play. So it'll be second and five at the 25-yard line. Now, Mike, we got to talk about this because this has been our excitement. The Vipers finally gone, taken by a Mrs. Miley, but it seems like she didn't answer the phone. Just imagine what phone call that would be. You know, winning like, just a $40,000 car with no taxes. My heart would stop. So second and five Falcons. And what do you have to reflect on this game so far, Mike? You know, from what I've seen, it really has shown just how much effort the T-Bolts have put forward. And that was an excellent run. That's more than a first down. But there's a fallen T-Bolt on the field, Dan Durkin. Dan Durkin. That's pretty scary when you see him hurt because most, he's a tough guy. He's up, he's up and up. He's up right from a tough hit. He's up right from a tough play. And he's, it seems like he's holding his elbow. And this is going to be a very crucial loss to the T-Bolts because he is, like I always say, a position player. He plays this position well. He does what he's supposed to do. You know, is it really going to be a tough loss for the T-Bolts if worse does come to worst and he can't play for the rest of the game? You know, Mike, let's not go to bad accusations. Let's see if he's okay. You know, but also what I'd like to push out right now is that the T-Bolts, you know, they were, they were holding up pretty good just now after the touchback. And you know, this, does, this is just an act of, it's just... It's an injury, and I think we can get back, but the key is momentum. And you can see our, our fans or our football crowd or our football team. Yeah, they're all still there. Bowing down in salute, making sure he can get up well. And he's okay. That's a great thing to see. He's walking off the field. You think he'll be back, Mike? You know, knowing him, he definitely will. And the look on Jim Malik's face and Coach Dwyer, you know, it's a pretty good possibility that he'll be back. You know, I think it was just a hit to the elbow, if you noticed. You know, that head to the elbow, that's just... Maybe just hit the funny bone. It just it stings, and it just you don't want to move. It does hurt. First and ten, So 11.05 in the third quarter. That's going to be enough for a first and ten for the Falcons, though. On the 43-yard line. Tio's going to have to stop him now before they get into field goal territory. And you can see the crowd asking, even Cody Hawkinson, slapping number nine, Dan Durkin, the way to get up. And now with the T-Bulls defense. And his pass. Back. Ball deep downfield. It's a bomb. And just overthrown just by maybe two or three hairs. Yeah, that's a tough thing to see. Just a little bit overthrown. And you know, you know you're that close to getting a huge reception. And since the T-Bulls did fall on that play, it would have been a touchdown. So at 10.30 in the third quarter, it's going to be second and 10. The T-Bulls have another shot to stop this drive. And now it's second and ten. I believe you already said that, Connor. And don't forget, for all you Catholic football fans, Providence is winning seven St. Rita zero. Uh, St. Rita, that's a, that's a very well-organized football program. You know that. We both know that from last year when we lost by two touchdowns from them. 
you know, my cousin, he played for Providence last year, and he really said it was a tough program to stick to. There's a pass. He finds his man, but taken down by number 99, Kevin Cesario. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of sad seeing this game go down to a close. But we still have over four, two more quarters of football left. You know, and I know I said this before, but you know, the whole homecoming week, that's you know, a really exciting moment. And just seeing that, you know, the whole school coming together like this. And it, it's a pass play. Seems like he'll find his man. And he did, but taken down hard by number 23, Kevin Golden. And, and it's an incomplete that. pass. I feel, what happened, Mike? I think like Kevin Golden hit him so hard that he dropped the ball. You know, that was a very hard hit. So 8.51 in the third quarter. t 42, Falcon 0. So fourth and five. What do you think they're going to do in this situation? And remember, they're probably most likely playing for respect with 42 points up on the board. You know, right now it looks like they're actually going for it. It seems like you can't really play smart when you're not up and, like, com like competing. There's a pass. Does he find his man? And yes, he does. Will it be far enough, though? And looks like it is. And taken Just down by number 44, down. Justin Argetsu. And with a fourth down conversion, they're just making it, just barely moving the chains. And remember, fans, on the 12th of October, the T-Bulls will be facing Lincoln Way North. That's going to be a hard game. We always have a problem with Lincoln Way North, but only losing one game to Sandberg, and that Sandberg game, we can both say that was really close. It was, 20, it was 30 to 23. It came down to the absolute last seconds. So Quincy Daniels telling our number 15, who's usually Dan Durkin's spot, to move over. And pass is caught. Then taken down by a swarm of Thunderbolts. You know, it seems like they're... It seems like the pass cover is kind of getting a little weak. What do you think, Mike? You know, the pass coverage, I don't really think they're expecting more out of this right now. Because the run play, it really just seems to be more of a threat to them than the pass in the first half. So second and two. Performance 38. T-Volts 42. Falcons nothing. Let's see if we can hold them. So a free four wide receivers out. It seems like all they've been doing in this drive is this passing. series is passing. It's been working though, so that's the whole thing. With trips left right now. They're on that overbalanced state, but let's see. I'll be surprised if they run it. Well, I would not be surprised if they run it. And they're passing. Oh, right in the hands of number 90, but it seems like he could not hold it. Number 30. Kevin Nealman. Brings up third and two. So it's going to be third and two. For the Falcons. And <laughs> that was a really tough thing to see. Just balls right in his hands and like we said do you think it has any effect with the cold with the weather it has to the, you know you can see your breath out there right now it's so cold zero and it seems like andrew cheerleaders aren't even that cold though yeah they do have long sleeves on the pants on though so with four wide receivers out one man in the backfield Here, here's the pass and there was a pump but it seemed like it was tipped now fourth and two for the falcons we're really going to go for it one more time. Four for two. Like I said, there's, what's the risk if they don't? It's four to the nothing. With 5.56 in the third quarter, and 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. Do you really think that they're going to score in a, score to 43? Honestly, I don't think so. And it looks like they're going to go for it with four wide receivers out and one man in the backfield. Right now, I'm feeling a run. Well, you don't. Well, you know, Mike. Here's, here's, the, here's the pass, and it's a scramble. And he finally, gets the yardage. Taken down by Cooper. number 32, David Giles. And don't forget, folks. 54. Notre Dame is playing Michigan Saturday, three o'clock. You know, that's one of the biggest, to me, for me for biggest football NCAA rivalries. You know, it is a huge rivalry, and where will they be playing, Connor? They'll be playing at Notre Dame. 
that's got to be a huge boost for Notre Dame fans. Like we said, momentum, always a strive. And remember last, they beat Michigan State, who was number 16. Notre Dame dropped number 11, number 11 in the nation. But back to Andrew football. Here's a pass. He's scrambling. He finds his man, but he had it. And it's intercepted. intercepted. Is it intercepted? Let's see what the referee said. Pass. Ruled. They're going to call it incomplete now. 15, Tommy Mansky broke it up. F number 15, Tommy Mansky broken up. Yeah, you know, Mansky came out and he replaced the yeah, ball. It looks like he's doing a great job at it. It was rolled an interception. And it seemed, and it is, it was rolled an interception. And that's a great turnover for the Thunderbolts right now, giving them another possession to make another possible scoring drive. You know, Andrew, they're just this game is just all about offense with them. They've been scoring touchdown after touchdown, and just Jarvion Franklin, Dennis Villamek, Jake Platt. They're just. Everyone's playing their job, and it just really shows what great execution can do for a football team. It really does. So 3:51 in the third quarter, your very own Thunderbolts leading 42 to nothing. Jake Platt in the backfield, or no, Nino Sam Filippo. Penalty flag on the play. That ball. It seems like they're they're up so high that they're taking out their starters. You know, it seems like a good idea at this point. You really wouldn't want to risk any injury, especially. For Number upcoming 30, games. Nino Sanfilippo. Nino Sanfilippo, who is a senior, he moved down a he moved down the second string quarterback because of the leaving of Tyler Hook, who was just did an excellent job leading the team last year, just as well as Jake Platt is doing. But we have number four, Jeremy Richards, out is pulling in for Jarvion. And you a fumble. Fumble on the Seems to be a misinterpretation. And you know what misinterpretations that really a football team tries not to do. Recovered by 34, Dan Ball, second down. Dan Ball now back there being second running back. Because when you when you six. misinterpret a ball, Mike, it just it throws up the whole just the whole offensive scheme. What's gonna happen? What the offensive line they get confused. They're just it's just something you not want to do. And, and keeper. it is quarterback keeper, but taken down shortly, that's gonna be third and twenty, but no game. San Filippo, number 30 on the quarterback. Keeper. And you know, right now with their, all their second stringers in, yeah, they don't really have much to lose with them being up by such a high amount of points. Not at all, Mike, especially, it's almost the fourth quarter. I, I think, I believe, I think it's safe to say, the forwards, does not really have much of a shot. It'd be a one in a million. So here's the, here's, but, Gene, but Jeremy Richards taken down shortly, so that's going to be fourth and 23. Four, two, and we're just two three, minutes three, left three, in the no third game. quarter. Up it looks like they're going to punt this one. And Jake Platt coming out to punt it. You know, Jake Platt, Ball he combo, really impressed me over this, Rice, just over this period. Just what, what we've been seeing out of him. He can kick, Number he can seven, run, Jake he can Platt pass. This is only his junior year. I believe senior to senior year is going to be more, more successful. You know, he's an athlete. He is a true athlete. So we have, we have, so here's the punt. Jacob Platt. And this is the first time we actually punt. Isn't that incredible? And we have Amir Aldodani jumping up Alex to touch the punch. But to Alex Batuello is stopping this one. Score. So 114 in the third quarter. Tebow is 42. Seven. The Falcons is nothing. And now it's, it's pretty impressive, the t -Bolts. It's, it's not much to say about them right now. It's just how much they've been doing. It's, it's going to be great to see if this... It's going to be great to see what's going to happen this um, next game. You know, and I'd also like to take this time to also remind of all the other activities that are involved in homecoming this week. There's numerous, especially if you saw at the parade. Now, Connor, I didn't get a chance to see the parade. Did you? I did. Actually, the cross-country team took a little stroll, and there's the pass... And nearly picked off again by, by second stringer, number 92, Alex Patuello, defensive lineman, 5'11 and 165 pounds. Now just everyone just coming together. There's debate, there's drama club, there's chess team, there's, there's girls cross country. Just one team together just showing off, just maybe even showing that, maybe just showing the football players that they're going to be here today. 
you know, everyone wants to be here today. It's the homecoming football game. Who wouldn't want to be here? So three wide receivers out. And it's a pass, or it's a run. He finds one lane. He finds another, but finally taken down that's hard. The end of the third quarter. And that's the end 14, of the third quarter with the two bulls not scoring a touchdown this quarter, which is kind of surprising. So fourth quarter. And don't forget, folks, fireworks will be after, weather permitting. Now this is the first, what, the first time we had fireworks, and you can see even Coach Malik, he, he, he can't help but smile. You know, that's really the first smile I think we've seen out of him this season. Normally he's a very you know, cold-faced guy until the end of the game. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than coming to homecoming and getting a touch. Sorry, folks. There's nothing better than going to homecoming and just out driving, out driving the opponent immediately. Don't you think, Mike? Don't you think, Mike? Yeah, that's exactly what I think, Connor. You can even see Coach Matt completely agrees as well. So as we get set for the fourth and final quarter of Andrew football. You know, the T-Bolts, you know, their second string defense being in there, you have to wonder how it's going to affect their game plan. Well, again, like you said, you don't want to risk the injuries. You don't want to risk what happens if even, perfect example, Dan Durkin winning over four, still 42 to nothing, injured, that, that probably scared yeah, Coach Malik. It has to. It's one of the most, most valuable players out on the field at this point. He's also a great baseball player. Me that's personally, also true. just as a freshman. Wow, that's a very high accomplishment. And it's a pass play. And he's almost in, he's almost sacked, and he's going to be by number brought down hard by number forty, Sean Murphy. You know, Connor. You know. It's just some of the other clubs in Andrew that I saw helping out the Assembly Varsity Club by I mean, Mr. Bodich. Now, that's a very important club, it seems like, with a lot of the varsity athletes stepping in to help out with a lot of things. You know, they actually... They actually, they run, they, they organize every event. They organize, like, say, running for kick, St. Baldrick's. It's their club, and they're really sure, they're proving. How efficient this can be. You know, I never really knew that. That's very impressive, though, running almost every single thing. And, of course, the budget is probably normally covered by student council. And, you know, the car actually been uh, been helped to pay for our new concession stand. Really? So 10.53 in the fourth quarter. She both still leading 42 zip. And what do you think the play is going to be today, Mike? You know, right now, it's just, at this point, it seems like they're just going to be passing all day long. Like I said, I think they're playing for respect. There's a pass play. He finds his man. Arm tackle one. But finally taken down. Tripped up by a few T-bolts. That would be good enough for a first down after complete. fourth and eight. Middle end on the tackle. And it's now 10-19 left in the fourth maybe. quarter. The Falcons, Falcons actually getting the farthest that they have all game now, down to the T-Bolt's 14-yard line. The t really gave gave our home field, or our home fans a reason to come out. So 9:59 in the fourth quarter, we have three wide receivers out, and it's a pass play. He finds really find man. man, but a little bit overthrown. overthrown. Looks like that ball wouldn't be caught by anybody. Jake O'Connor in on the coverage. Jake in on the coverage. I'm really liking how they're trying to make an effort to score, even even if like, basically all hope is lost. You know, every single team they really want to see just them get at least one point on the board, and you know when they're down by 42, you think the two bolts will let them at least get one, but that's not the way they play. That's not the way any football team plays. So four wide receivers out. Let's see if they're going to try to pass again. Will he find his man? And nearly oh intercepted by number 12. Jake O'Connor, the junior defensive back. Five foot seven and 145 pounds. That's a small guy, Mike. Especially for a defensive player. 
Yeah, he's only a junior though. He still could bulk up. Andrew Thunderbolt would like to welcome back former staff member Mr. Kevin Phillips. Welcome back, Mr. Phillips. We know you're on here somewhere. And we're welcoming back Mr. Phillips, a former staff member here at Andrew. So, Connor, what did you really expect out of this game? Did you expect a, sh a high-scoring game just on the T-Bolt side like this? You know, Andrew Dolphins really did a great job. They have role players. Dennis Villamick, he can catch the ball for us. Jarvan Franklin is just a complete powerhouse. I, I expected a clean and just solid football game by the Andrew, and it's going to be a sack Johnson, by number 32. By number 32 David Giles. You know, this reminds me, it isn't as cold, but I remember in 1992, one of Andrew football's best football teams played in the Ice Bowl, and they were 11-1, and one, and they lost to the third round of states in the Ice Bowl. It was over 32, it was 32 degrees out, snowing. That must have been an interesting day. It kind of reminds me of this team. Just minus the snow. It's 7.47 in the fourth quarter, and what I like about the Andrew Thunderbolts they're they're a really young team. They, this is this is a year for experience, or this is a year to learn like learn from their mistakes, and they're not making any mistakes whatsoever, in my opinion. I mean, only one loss to Sandberg, and now another and taken sack. out hard again by number thirty-two, David Giles. <laughs> That's two sacks for him tonight. That's a very impressive play by him. Two sacks in a row, especially on a fourth down. So Andrew's second team offense will come out and give it a shot for a touchdown. And we see number two, Amir Aldonami, coming out to play wide tight end. Albonani is a senior, five foot seven and 170 pounds. You know, we really haven't heard much from him this year, Connor. Well, you know, he's actually all on special teams. And, and here's, noticed that. here's the motion, or here's the... Number 10, and there's a Nick flag in the backfield, possibly illegal motion. Gets to the 40 yard line. There's a penalty on the play. Let's see what the referees say, Mike. And as we're awaiting the referee's call, I'd also like to bring up. I'd also like to bring up uh, the speech team here at Andrew. The speech team, I was a part of it last winter, and it's a lot of fun. You get really close to a lot of people. Well, you know, Mike, speech. It's, just, it's so necessary in any like any job force you keep. Everyone likes a good public ski speaker. You know, and if you don't like talking in front of people, they do have an event called radio broadcasting, where you don't see the judge at all except when you give him your sheet. And here's the motion, and it's he has one. He defends one. He sheds one. It's number gonna be a, thirty, Michael Mangan on the carry. Gets number thirty, the Michael Mangan to on the carry. It's gonna be first and ten for the Thunderbolts. Five fifty-two in the fourth quarter. Think the T-Bolts are gonna break fifty points tonight? It's possible, Mike, especially the way we're playing. And the T-Bolts now set up again. And referees are blowing their whistles. And you know, Mike, it's great to see just a, in the enormous capacity in the stands. And as you can see, some of the fans, they, a little bit of them filed out, but <laughs> a game this crazy, it really just... Expected after the end of the first half, you know the T-Boats are going to win. Seems like an injured player on the field, and he's walking up num fine. Number 10. Morris Rashawn. No, it's Zach Len. Final score, Lamont 17. Oak Forest, 14. So our second team has a, has a chat, first and 10, 5, 19 and running. Three wide receivers out. Nino Sam Flipper, he gives it to, to Jeremy Richards. Richards Jeremy finds Richards, a he finds a lane. He's had much blockers, but it's going to be good enough for an Andrew first down. And much more. A 28-yard run. First and ten. Now first and ten from the Thorn Ridge 23-yard line. That was a great run outside. Amir Aldoami, he did his job. He cut, he, he cut his defensive end out inside. So Jeremy Richards can have a clear, clean shot. 
Now just four minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock. It looks like the T-Bulls, like we said earlier, have really secured this victory. You know, Mike, I, I can't help but wonder if uh, Miss, M M Miss Molly came to claim her Charger or Viper. Yeah, hopefully she did, because that's a very nice car. Plate quarterback keeper. He finds more than enough, and he might get in, and it's going to be an Andrew touchdown. T-Bolts 48, Falcon 0. And the score is now 48 nothing. T-Bolts winning. T-Bolts now, they're absolutely just dominating this game. This seems like they're an unstoppable machine. We have Michael Ehlers coming out for the extra point. He hasn't missed one yet. You know, let's, Mike, keep that let's keep that trend going, huh, Mike? Let's. You know, Mike Ehlers, he's been really running in between soccer and football this week with having Sandberg on Tuesday, Bolingbrook yesterday, and tomorrow with Ehlers Joliet Central all for soccer. And those are just two just tiresome sports, really. Yeah, soccer, they really you do are. a lot of running. And just kicking a ball takes a lot of concentration, especially out of Nino St. Pluto's hands. And it is good. Keebles, 49, Falcon 0. With 404 left in the fourth quarter. Let's see if the Falcons can at least score one attempt. You know, Mike Ehlers, he really. And there's the excellent replay by Needle Fan People just diving in up the middle. Getting the ball across to get that T ball touchdown. And you can see the cheerleaders doing touchdowns for every, or doing push-ups for every touchdown the Thunderbolts have. That's a lot of push-ups for them tonight. Oh, they're getting a little upper body strength, huh, Mike? Yeah, a lot. Well, that's what they're used to for Andrew offense. Mike Ehlers, the so Mike Ehlers getting the kickoff. Oh, ball slipping up a little bit. Maybe it's just the cold, his hands. Too numb to grip the ball. You know, that's a tough thing. When I was down there, it was warmer out than it is now, but your hands, after a little bit, you couldn't use them anymore. Here's the kick. And it's one of his shorter kicks of the night. And almost tackled by Quincy Daniels, but finally taken down by number 15 and 33. Tom Mansky and Nick Ennis. That was a very good play by them. You know, he found a lane, but T Bolts easily found it again and just shut it down. And the Viper is still unclaimed by the winner of the raffle. So there's four wide receivers out. And now with the pass. Ball downfield. Almost, Almost intercepted, intercepted by number again. 45. Davey, Matt Davey, the senior linebacker, 5'10 and 165 pounds. So 257 in county in the fourth quarter. And this will be the end of homecoming week. And many people call it tra sad and tragic events. You know, I know homecoming week is not until tomorrow night's dance. And I think that's what a lot of the school is looking forward to right now. Homecoming week is just an exciting time just to, just to show your true colors, show your Andrew pride, your Andrew alumni, and just have fun. You know, it's something you really like to see. You see a whole school come together during homecoming week, and it's a real nice feeling. We bring the funder, Mike. You know, that's been like the legacy for like three years to come. And now the defense in the backfield, snap, it's a pass. And, and he caught, but taken down immediately by number 15, Tommy Mansky. And now with the first down, with just two minutes and seven seconds left on the clock. Don't forget, TO fans, the cross country runners will be running at Midlothian Medals. Come and support them. Back to Andrew Football. And almost caught again by number 11, Aldante Howard. Number 14, yeah, that's got to be tough right now. You know, you still want to score that touchdown, but you just keep on missing that pass. And you keep on, it's a pass that you have to make at this point of the game. 
I completely agree, Mike. And there's the final timeout charge to the Falcons. You know, you can really see why it's a timeout taken by them, but at this point, is it really worth it? Well, you know, Mike, like I said, playing for respect, they just want to... We just try once to score one touchdown, score one point, to not make this call completely shut out. In October 12th, that's senior night, to come out and support your seniors. And now, with just one minute and 28 seconds left, the T-Bolts are retaking the field. Think the defense might get a touchdown tonight? Well, let's see, Mike. That's a pretty close call, especially with 128 left in the fourth quarter. Remember, nothing's impossible. I completely agree with you, Mike. Nothing's impossible in football. One, one minute you'll be in a. One minute you'll be in a in the first quarter and yeah. losing, and the next minute you'll be up by 40 in the fourth. One minute there'll be a fumble return, one minute there'll be, there'll be anything. A little mental fart. Everyone has one, Mike. There's a pass. He's scrambling, avoiding the, avoiding the sack, and finally he picks his man, and that's gonna be good for a first down. And you can see that excellent sportsmanship. Andrew Player is helping up the ball in Falcon. And another timeout by the Falcons. And I see exactly why they're trying to get the uh, final touchdown, but you know, it's just not something that a lot of people want to stay and see. And there's also the fireworks show following the game. You know, I'm excited because how many how many days how many times a year do we have fireworks at Andrew High School? This is the only time homecoming night, homecoming right after a football game. It's an exciting night because, you know, normally you don't see fireworks in Illinois. That's in Indiana, Mike. And just about everywhere around us. Except for the White Sox. Except for the White Sox. Who's still in the hunt for the playoffs. And it's a pass play. He has room and he has time. Will he find his man? And yes, he does. But the question but the, is, is he in bounds? He's out of bounds. You know, number 15 is trying to get the benefit of the doubt there. He's disappointed with it. Well, no, who wouldn't be disappointed with this? Just such of a blowout. You know, I think that the players, they're beating up on themselves too much. The Chibos are a great team and it's their homecoming night. So, of course, they're going to be pushing 130%. So second and ten. Falcons will have another shot. Four wide receivers out. He has time and he has room. And he's going to take advantage of that room. And caught again by number 11. Number 11 needs one more blocker. But taken out of bounds. And right now, me and Connor would also like to thank some people. Mark Gannon on camera. Ryan Wittry. Connor Burns commentating. And Mike Brennan is my commentating partner. Omar Schur on camera. Jack Valenti. Nate Chanel directing. Joe Salinas is camera. Lance Gasick is camera. Chris Youngbrick is camera. And Daniel Justay as camera. And there seems to be a flag on the play. With just 34 and a half seconds left. First and 10 Falcons. Also, we'd like to thank Michael Kravitz. And also, Mr. Rich Piacek for allowing us to do this, and the IHSA for allowing us to put our productions on their website. And don't forget, Mr. Krios was the, was the earlier broadcaster. And he did a very fine job. We learned from the best, Mike. So 27 seconds left, that's in the fourth quarter, and there's gonna be... And what does it look like, another timeout? It seems like it's just a clock error. Dorrance calls the third and final timeout. No, it's a third and final timeout. You know, it's a little frustrating right now because, you know, they know they're going to lose. There's really nothing they can do at this point, you know, being down by 49 points and having 26 seconds. Well, like I said, Mike, they don't want to see the blowout. Like, what any team doesn't. And you but can see course. the cheerleaders showing their homecoming spirit. You know, that's a, that's a scary feeling, Mike, just going up on top and just... It's just like a trust fall, ultimate trust fall. I had it happen to me one time, and <laughs> I wanted to get down as soon as I could. 
And also the powder puff cheerleaders. Man, she did a great job Thursday. Just see how many backflips they were able to do. I saw a few of them during the assembly, and it was pretty crazy. And don't forget, folks, if you, if you missed the Powder Cup game, we did uh, we did broadcast it at ihsatv.org. And you can view it from there. Here's the pass. It has potential, but overthrown. And now with no more and timeouts. seconds left. This will just about wrap this broadcast. And so it they, looks like right now. See, they're going to try one more time. But will they be able to? And now the final play of the game. Yes. And almost intercepted again. By two Andrew players this time. So final score, Andrew 49, Cornwood 0. An excellent wrap to homecoming week. Now we're going to go to Ryan Wittry. He's on the field right now. For an interview with, with the Dennis field. Villamick. With Dennis Villamick, a very crucial part of this game. And, and as we wait for him to come on, you know, Dennis Villamick, he's been a huge part of this whole season, it seems like. Two touchdowns today, Mike. Excellent. He's involved in just about every single special teams play out there. And it really just shows how much effort he puts into practice. You know what got me excited when he did that punt return and with those black... Everyone, it's just a... This, what I like about Andrew's team, it's a role position team, it's a role player team. Everyone does their job, and it's just, it's not one but all. We bring the funder. And also, there's going to be a fireworks show afterwards. And you can see just, just congratulating. And now, we're still waiting the fireworks and the on-field interview with, with Dennis Ryan Villamick. Wittry. And it seems like Dennis Villamick is trying to be found at this moment. But kind of, what is, what do you, what are your summarizing thoughts of this game? Every, like I said, everyone did their job. The offense, the offense scored. The defense helped, like helped defend. It was something that they had to do, and they did it. It was a team game, really. With an excellent, like I said, an excellent wrap of homecoming, I'm excited. I really am. And you can see even the crowd's excited, the field. And the marching band supporting us. It seems like... We're trying to get an interview with Dennis Villamick. It's amazing to see even an enormous amount of people left for the fireworks. And like we said, the man in blue supporting the Cubs, Ryan Witchery, getting set for an interview. And the crowd just swarming over our camera, man. You know, why wouldn't you? Everybody wants that little moment of fame that they have. And <laughs> you can see Ryan Witchery struggling to find Villamick right now. Every, everyone's saying number one. And here's Ryan Witchery down on the field attempting to get the interview. Okay, Dennis, so obviously the team's behind you. How do you prep yourself mentally for these games? Uh, you know, we just have to we have to go on every game thinking that our opponents are going to battle us, and we just have to get, uh, get the job done. Did you do anything special for homecoming? Uh, no, we, we approached every game the same way, and we didn't want to take your opponent lightly. Okay, so Adam Hepp wanted me to ask this question. Yeah. Were you hungry? I was very hungry, yeah. Hungry for a win, hungry for food? Uh, hungry for both, actually. Okay. What does it mean to win your homecoming game? Uh, it's great to win my last homecoming game, and so it's something that I'll always remember. Okay, very good. As the fireworks are going off, this is Ryan Richards signing off. Keep it classy.
Thank you, T-Both Hands, for joining us. This has been Connor Burns and Mike Brennan, and we are out.